uh, members of the SMEs in our country, Hamjambo, Hamjambo Tena. Um, I want to begin by apologizing that um, you've taken much longer the, than we anticipated to come here. And I have uh, another engagement which is starting shortly. That the reason why we may not have sufficient time. But uh, I want you to look at this as work in progress, that I'm available and that I will have another opportunity to talk longer with you people. I want to say that the contribution of SMEs to the growth and development of Kenyan economy is well known and not disputed. You are part and parcel of the evolution of our society, where we are empowering our people to be able to meaningfully participate in our economy. Small and medium-sized enterprises represent 98% of all businesses in our country today. More than 80% of Kenya's working population rely on SMEs for income. SMEs contributed an estimated 34% of the country's gross domestic product in the year 2016. SMEs generate 80% of new jobs annually. Small enterprises hire large numbers of women and youth and are active in rural and vulnerable populations. As a result, they encourage economic inclusion, empowerment, while reducing employment. I am mentioning those figures basically to show the importance that I myself attach to this sector. The challenge we must address is how to enhance the emergence, growth, and spread of SMEs in Kenya. Now, approaches to en enhance SMEs growth. Our country, since independence, has passed through different stages to reach where we are here. You will know that before independence, we were running a fairly segregated society where our people, the indigenous population here, were at the bottom of the ladder and therefore were not really a serious participant in economic development of our country. When the independence came, the government started first with the policy of Africanization. And then that was found to be a little bit racist. It was changed to Kenyanization. That was basically an affirmative action process to allow our people to be able to participate in the economic growth of our country. That first allowed our people, through institutions that were created like ICDC or uh, KNTC, to begin to engage in uh, small-scale businesses in our country. Now we have reached a stage where we are today. The issues we must confront are how do we ensure entrepreneurs of startups manage sustainable growth of their companies? What kind of support do they require from the government and the public? How do we ensure not only quality, quantity, but also quality SMEs? We need to help SMEs understand their ecological habitat and deploy it accordingly. There are those that can thrive with labor-intensive programs. There are those that need high-tech programs. There's need to help SMEs build a closely knit web of cooperation among themselves, build own networks, and share resources so that they can maximize on the benefits of cooperation. 
In Korea, they invested in regional clusters of SMEs with the government support. The clusters then share information and knowledge. This help them to gain collective bargaining power with the big businesses. They also came up with a policy for co-branding. This is a process in which several SMEs market themselves under one brand name. It is a cost-cutting and market measure. We need to help SMEs nurture relationship with the big businesses even while they compete. In Kenya, we need to start with the low-hanging fruits. We need efficient and balanced public policies and ensure they are supportive of SMEs. The government must see itself as being responsible for the protection of small businesses. We need clear legislation that provide clarity on level and, and nature of government support and protection of SMEs. We need clear policies to ensure financial support and fair competition for SMEs. We need to enforce legislation on the local content for public projects. We must establish and enforce Buy Kenya, Build Kenya policies in the public procurement, research and development support. We need to establish funds whose sole purpose is to lend money to SMEs. Some countries have, have government funded and run small and medium industry banks that provide money to SMEs at low interest rates. We need that here. And I'm happy to hear from the peers that the government is taking over some uh, burdens and risks in this regard, but this needs to be properly institutionalized. SMEs need, need tax breaks and special tax credits, especially when the operations involve procurement of commodities from external markets. We need clear anti-monopoly and competition policies. We need to ensure big businesses do not monopolize domestic markets and that SMEs have sound protection from foreigners. And here, indeed, we need to be clear. We are not trying to say that SMEs should kill local manufacturing. Far from it. We say that there is space for the existence of SMEs and local manufacturing. And the SME is basically a starting point that eventually now develops to become also manufacturers in the local markets. This is the way it has happened in other countries. And that's why SMEs are playing an important role. We must help SMEs that want to go regional to do so. And here, as you know, we have the East African community market. This is our biggest market, and I know that our SMEs themselves are very active in exploiting this market. We need to remove barriers which still exist in moving goods along our borders to our neighboring countries. This will create a much bigger market for our SMEs. All government ministries need to have programs and provisions for support of SMEs by law. Development of SME, SME parks. Increased access to funding in the agriculture sector, especially for SMEs in agriculture value chains. Public-private partnership in enhancing access to infrastructure through the investment in energy, water, and information and communications technology. 
reduce electricity costs by introducing the policy of differential pricing, lower electricity prices during off-peak periods. We need to support and promote SMEs that want to engage in exporting to other countries and regions by providing such businesses with export subsidies. Government must encourage dialogue with SMEs with a focus on taxation, licensing, and uh, etc. Taxation and unfair competition are killing our SMEs. And I've said, and they've mentioned it, it is an area where there can be proper dialogue so that taxation does not become a big burden that kills the SMEs. It is not proper policy to have come up with very heavy taxes because if the taxes are too heavy, there's always a tendency to evade paying taxes. But if the taxes are reasonable and the net is wider, then the government is able to collect more taxes and everybody is happy. This is where we want to go. I just want to say that the apostle who spoke here before has led a team to come and see me, have engaged the combat people, understand fully the challenges that they are facing, problems that they have, and uh, I know that um, those problems can be resolved. Some of the issues that have been raised here, I'm also going to use my position to try to raise it with the other authorities in the government. I know, for example, also, that sometimes there's also unfair competition where people from countries from where the SMEs are importing, those who have got direct access to manufacture there, also are allowed to come and back here and follow up and also come and, and hawk those businesses here in competition with our local traders. This is not right. This is not right. And that is also sometimes discrimination in the issuance of visas. That because of COVID, is, and, but COVID is also now being used as an excuse to deny our people access to the, the, the countries of origin where they can go to, to purchase goods which they then bring here to sell. But people from those uh, uh, markets find their way to come here and compete unfairly with our own businesses. This is not right. This is something that needs to be addressed. Finally, because I know that um, the chairman of Kenya Bureau of Standards was here, we are also here with uh, Mr. Richard Ngatia, President of Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, is also here. But the CABS, I've said, has a very important role to play. In my early incarnation, I was an officer of Kenya Bureau of Standards. I know what standardization is about and what it is not about. Standardization is not supposed to be used to punish businesses. Standardization is supposed to deal with quality and enhance quality and then also protect people against harmful goods. But there's a goods which may be of low quality and are not harmful to anybody. And if somebody wants to buy something which is of low quality, that's what he can afford, why do you deny him or her that, that, that opportunity to do so? By imposing some fictitious standards. I will also going to have opportunity to talk to the Kenya Bureau of Standards that they restrict to themselves to what standardization is about. Fitness for use, that is what standardization is all about. I thank you very much for listening to me.